my name is Jerry Frank and I'm co-founder and CEO of Asset Rover. And today I'm here with Paul Heenick from Heenick Landscaping. And Heenick Landscaping has been in business since about 1991. And today Paul is going to visit with us and talk about surface grading and the importance of it. Welcome. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so Asset Rover is a website focused on real estate investors and one of the issues that is common for real estate investors is they find a property that may have a wet basement and we know that surface grading is sometimes a, a fix for that. So how do you know if you actually have a surface grading problem? The easiest way to look to see if you have a surface grading problem is if there's standing water. So if we just got this rain and there's still water puddling in the grass, then it, you've got a surface grading problem. Um, the rule of thumb is uh, if there's no puddle after about 48 hours, you're usually pretty good, depending on the type of soil you have. But mm -hmm. for the most part, you just don't want to see a bunch of puddling. So as, as a real estate investor, I probably want to look for those rainy days, <laughs> to be honest and I, I just want to go out and walk the lawn, see what's out there. Yeah, uh, another thing that you wouldn't want is um, if you can see where water is making a channel close to your foundation, that would mean also that you have a bad uh, slope because you don't want the water to be cutting a channel in, into your soil right up next to your house. And that one will just be evident by looking, right? Yes. <laughs> Well, for the most part, I mean, sometimes it's, sometimes you can't see it because the grass grows up. If it's just a little channel, mm -hmm. it all kind of depends. So if, if you were an investor, would you walk, would you walk the perimeter of the house and what would you look for? I, I like to walk the perimeter of the house. The uh, first thing I look for when I walk the perimeter of the house is I look to see what the grade is like up against the foundation. Is it flat? Is it, uh, I've got a positive slope, is it a negative slope? Um, then if it is a negative slope, I look to see, well, can I put dirt in there to bring up the grade or am I running out of concrete? Because you don't want to bury your siding. Mm -hmm. And you want to stay down six inches from the siding so you don't get bugs crawling up in there. So I, those are the things I look for. I also look at the gutters, I look at the roof. I want to make sure you know the gutters are working properly. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that um, the eave spout can handle all the water that's coming to it. Mm -hmm. um, because if the water's pouring over it, that means pot potentially you need to change the downspout from a two by three to a three by four, um, or even the, the steepness of the roof peak. Maybe you need to put up a little extra like backboard on your gutter. Mm -hmm in order to make sure all the water hits the backboard and goes into the gutter so it works properly. Mm -hmm. So those are all things that I look for when I'm walking around a property. Okay, okay. So how common are grading problems in both new and old homes? <clears throat> They're pretty common in both. Um, well, I would say we work a lot with um, any house that's probably five years or older. Just because uh, the, the overdig Mm -hmm. uh, the, the outer three foot past the foundation, mm -hmm. when they go and they excavate that out, they backfill it with dirt and it takes seven years for that to totally settle out, mm -hmm. is what the, they've came up with. So um, anytime in that cycle of time period, that can all be settling, which therefore means you've got a negative slope going to your house or potentially a problem. And, is, and this is something that gets worse over time. Yes, um, soil is always moving. Mm -hmm. uh, underground, there's rivers, there's streams. Um, and so anytime water's moving in somewhere, it has the ability to be able to move along with its soil. So whether it's on the surface or whether it's underground. So no matter how old your house is or how young, or mm -hmm. it always has a potential that the water's going to move the soil and drag it somewhere to where you end up with a negative slope along your foundation. Okay. One of, one of the biggest things that occur along the foundation with water is it always gets the most water. Because any rain that's blowing towards your house, it hits the siding and it falls straight down. Right. So if you've got a 10 foot wall of siding, you basically just took a 10 foot area strip of your yard and basically put it all into one spot. 
So if you got this one spot in your yard getting two inches of rain, that spot just got 20 inches. Mm -hmm. So therefore it has a large, uh, uh, a very high uh, volume of water coming towards it during a big rain. So. so if you have a problem with grading, what steps do you go through to, to fix it? So the first thing I do when uh, uh, the slope is wrong, and the easiest thing to do is, in my philosophy, is let the water flow naturally. If I can get the property to grade away, um, the city code is 10 feet out from the foundation, 6 inches of fall. And you want to be 6 inches down from your siding. So if I can get that and have it be a natural slope away from the house, mm -hmm. that's the route I try to take. You usually end up potentially either hauling off dirt or you're hauling in dirt depending on what you have along your foundation. Mm -hmm. But um, that's usually what I try to do first. If that doesn't work, so say we tried that method, if somebody wants to do it in stages, we tried that, it didn't work, now we're gonna look and potentially put downspouts out. And the difference with us when we do a downspout, we don't use a pop-up. We get it out away from the house more than just 10 feet. We try to get that water so when it comes out of the tile, it uh, it's not going to go back towards your foundation. So that's kind of the second phase to what, what we usually try to encourage people to do is the downspouts. And uh, once that's done, mm -hmm. then uh, if they still got a water problem, um, usually we have to excavate around the foundation. And when we, we dig out all that dirt and we put in a new foundation tile. Okay. And the difference with us compared to the foundation tile that's down there is every contractor puts that foundation tile on the footing. Mm -hmm. We like to go below the footing because the um, elevation of the basement floor and the footing mm -hmm. are within a few inches. So that when the water comes up from the ground and goes into that tile, mm -hmm. if it gets too much capacity of water coming too fast and the tile can't keep up, mm -hmm. you only got two inches of grace before it's coming onto your basement floor through the cold joint. Okay. So we like to put our tile down eight inches, so therefore now we've got about 10 inches of grace. So we go eight inches below that footing. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to work pretty well for us. We haven't had anybody call them back complaining yet. Okay, so, all right. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so first, first you just try the, the, the good old fix the grade, mm -hmm. then the gutters, mm -hmm. then you do the, the, the big excavation. Correct. So you just see which works and um, so they don't have to take all of the expense if they don't need to. Yeah. You try to take the least expensive route. Correct. I mean, usually your gutters and your downspout, they can kind of roll together because mm -hmm. there's not a huge cost difference by doing those two. Mm -hmm. um, but once you do the foundation tile, now that gets a lot more involved because right. you're hauling off all that dirt and we're backfilling all that with rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, the great thing about clean rock is when water hits that, it goes straight down. It doesn't penetrate towards the foundation, and um, it also takes a lot of weight off the foundation. You know, if they you know, if they've let the problem go for a long time, and uh, the foundation started to move, sometimes if you backfill that with that clean rock, that takes so much weight off it that the foundation doesn't move anymore. Mm -hmm. So, so this, like many problems, it doesn't get better over time; it only gets worse. Correct. And more expensive. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. So we've gone through a lot of stuff. Is there anything else that you'd like to share that we didn't cover that you think is important? Sometimes, um, like if you have a crawl space in your house or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the water issue is on the basement wall that that crawl space is connected with, mm -hmm. sometimes we've had to do it, put in a French drain, which is a tile basically, same concept as a foundation tile, mm -hmm. but not as extreme. We can go down about two and a half to three feet deep, and we can excavate out that dirt, backfill with the clean rock with a perforated tile down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then that way that will pull the water towards it before it gets to your basement wall. Mm -hmm. So that's sometimes uh, another option in order to try to prevent the crawl space from, from leaking. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing about uh, these investors and their houses, uh, you don't know how much dirt sometimes that people have put around the house. Uh, mm -hmm. We were just doing one and they buried, it looked like it was up to concrete, but instead they had their, their seal, their uh, 
bottom six inches of their wood was buried under dirt. They had no way of knowing. Hmm. And uh, because they had the siding all cut out, so you, you didn't see, pretty hard to see that. But right. That's stuff you want to look for when you're walking around the property. Mm -hmm. So. All right, very helpful. So what is the, the reason you get called most for leaky basements? I get a lot of calls in the spring. Uh, when the frost is coming out of the ground, it's usually going to a window well. Uh, that is, uh, and it goes through the sides and it's those small windows mm -hmm. um, that don't have the real deep hole. Right. Um, those seem to leak the most because they're, they're older mm -hmm. for the most part and they're um, not as durable to, to keep out the wa water. Mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've, they've cocked them, they've sealed them up the best they can, but unfortunately the, the water always seems to find a way through those older windows. Um, I do get calls for the bigger windows too. Um, I've had some people call me after getting a new driveway. They had clean rock put all around their window underneath the driveway and clean rock, like I said, pulls moisture. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the window well was the lowest spot next to the driveway and it pulled the whole driveway, all of its moisture. <laughs> so unfortunately that window took on a lot of water. Mm -hmm. um, and is what we always encourage for window wells, big or small, is try to get a tile underneath them so that way the water has a place to go. Mm -hmm. Some people run the tile straight down to the foundation tile mm -hmm. if they have one. Some people don't and you have to trench it out. Um, I call it daylight where the tile can drain with the proper elevation out somewhere else on the property. Mm -hmm. Now granted we've ran into problems where we can't get that on some properties where the window is the deepest spot on the property. Right. And, and that, that's tough, but I mean, is what we do there is we put in a dry well. It's, it's kind of our last case scenario that we can do. And is what that is, is we dig out on, as far from the house as we can on the property, we dig out a big hole that's like 10 foot by 10 foot by eight foot deep. Mm -hmm. we, we wrap all that with a fabric and we backfill that with clean rock, which pulls moisture, but yet it also will let moisture come into it and give it more time to disperse in the soil. Mm -hmm. So how long does a project like that take? Depends on the size of the house. If we're doing a foundation tile, that's going to probably take us maybe two days, depending on the size of the house. Mm -hmm. If we're doing a French drain or the window wells, you're probably looking more like a day. Mm -hmm. And you can use, and and why we do it, you can stay there too. I know a lot of people get worried uh, when we're digging around their foundation whether or not their house is going to collapse. Your house is safe. <laughs> so. Okay. So if someone wanted to contact you and they're interested in your services, how can they get a, get a hold of you? We have an uh, email. My email is paul at heniclandscaping.com. That's one way of getting a hold of me. Otherwise, uh, our, my phone number is 551-1732. Okay. And then so. we'll put that on the, the screen. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. This was Thank you. extremely helpful. We appreciate it.